Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, the power of the gospel which comes to us through the cross of Jesus Christ. And here is Tim Sturby to sing, Thanks to Calvary. Today I went back to the place where I used to go. Today I saw same old crowd I knew before and when they asked me what had happened I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, do the letters to the seven churches of Revelation chapters one and, or, or two and three 
relate to today's churches, and if so, how? Indeed, these seven letters to the seven churches of, uh, Revela of Revelation 2 and 3, they apply fully to the church today. They serve as warning, they serve as a challenge, they serve as a rebuke, even as all of the scripture. There is no reason why they should be excluded. We have from both the pen of the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter these words. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and following, all scripture is inspired by God. That includes Revelation 2 and 3. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And it goes on. Paul says to Timothy, I solemnly charge you, based upon the power of the Word of God, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of G Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the Word, preach this Word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebu rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. Then. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 20 and 21 from Peter, we read, Know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So if it applies, how does it do so? Some interpreters have looked to those seven letters and have mapped out seven successive periods in church history. And I think that there is something to be said for that, that the letters had to do with particular problems that would follow in succession. However, there is a problem in that, to work that too precisely, because today we have churches all over the world. The seven churches of Revelation 2 and 3, they were located in what is now Western Turkey in a very confined space of geography, and yet the letters are very diverse in what they address. Today we have the church all over the world in many cultures, serving in many languages and addressing different problems, and the devil has many tricks in his bag whereby to throw a church into disorder. And so I think that each of these applies in different measure to different parts of the body of Christ all around the world, and that it is good for us to pay particular attention to each and every one to hear the council and not to say, well, look, that, that dealt with the first three centuries or that dealt with the 10th, 11th, and 12th century. Each of these has a challenge and a rebuke and a word of instruction for us today. And we do well to pay attention to each of the seven, uh, seven letters. Question number two, also from Revelation. If there is no sickness in heaven, and here we're dealing with Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. If there is no sickness in heaven, why the leaves which are described as for the healing of the nations? Let's look at that chapter, which is the last chapter of the New Testament and the last chapter of the Bible, as it describes the glories of heaven. In the middle of its street, we read, on either side of the river, was the tree of life. That tree of life we have not seen since the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were driven out lest they take of it and in their fallen state live forever. God, in his mercy, he denies them access to the tree of life, lest horrors of horror that they might take it and in their fallen state live forever in that condition. It says, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, how diverse is the goodness of God, how abundant in is his goodness to us. 
And it says, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. That is not described in detail as to exactly what is going on. But look here at the abundant provision of God. The focus is on the fulfillment of the promise of Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, and the perfection of God's provision for our every need. To the church, the letter to the church of Ephesus, Revelation 2, 7, it says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. And so, if there is to be the fulfillment of that promise, as God surely fulfills his word, that is needed, and that does happen here. But then also, the perfection of God's provision for our every need, whether it is for sickness, whether it is for hunger, whether it is for sunshine, everything that we can possibly need, it is right there. It is right in front of us. And that is what is especially being pushed home to us is that this place, this place which it, it stretches our imagination to think of it, the glories of heaven, every possible need that we will have, it will be more than addressed in that glorious place which God has gone, which Jesus has gone to prepare for us. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us, our mailing address, Faith to Live By. Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi Taves now comes to sing Under His Wings. Trust him, I know he will keep me. 
Faith to Live By continues on radio and television with a Canada-wide impact because of friends who care to share in this work. Part of our work is Faith to Live By resources. Just recently, we have been talking about this book called Mum's Bible, 12 sermons which I preached out of my mother's copy of the scriptures, scriptures which she had highlighted, which she had underlined, notes which she had made in the margin, and I have also included in this book a few pages of biographical sketch of my mum. I would be happy to send this to you, as with all of our resources, it is sent free and postage paid, and we do not have a mailing list. If you wish to have a copy, please write to us this week. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also reach us toll free 1 833 367 3852. Also, our faith to live by.ca website has a means of you contacting us and making your request through that vehicle. And now, once again, we have Rick Bowring coming to sing No Name has meant so much to me. There is a name on earth I highly treasure. Oh, how it thrills my spirit through and through. Oh, blessed name, Beyond degree or measure, a wondrous name of him so kind and true. My heart is thrilled whenever I think of Jesus, that blessed name which sets the captive free. The has meant so much to me. That name brings gladness to a soul in sorrow. It makes life shadows and its clouds depart. Brings strength in weakness for today, tomorrow. aching heart my heart is thrilled when I think of Jesus that blessed name which sets the captive free the only name through which I find salvation no name on earth has meant so much to me that name still lives and will live on forever while kings and kingdoms will forgotten be through mist or rain will be beclouded never that name shall shine and shine eternally. My heart is thrilled whenever I think of Jesus, that blessed name which sets the captive free. 
Who is this man called Jesus? He came among us, born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died an atoning death. He was buried only for three days. He rose gloriously and he ascended to the right hand of the Father. He spoke to Saul, Acts chapter 9, and said to him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Thereby identifying with the people who were following after him in such a tight and glorious manner. He does that same thing today. He is with us. He cares for us. But I take you from Acts chapter 9 to the concluding book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 1. And once again, we have a first century Christian, one who we have known so well through the pages of the New Testament. His name is John, the son of Zebedee. He has given us the Gospel of John and the three letters of John. He is on the island called Patmos. It is Death Island. John, why are you there? Did you violate some horrendous law? John had been true to the proclamation of Jesus Christ. He had made known the glorious truth that there is one God among all the pantheon of the Greco-Roman world. That was offensive. One God? How can you possibly say that? We have so many, so many options. John held out that there was one true God, and he was banished to Death Island, there to scrape together sustenance as best as he could. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9 says, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker of the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. John, he had not won a crown in this world for his hardship. That crown would be awarded to him on the other side. In this world, there was peril, there was danger, there was trouble, there was tribulation. And it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. It was Jesus Christ who was there with his disciple, with his apostle, with his man. And I declare to you that he is with you in your time of loneliness, in your isolation, in your time when you think, is there anybody around here? Does anybody care? I tell you, the Son of God has not forgotten about you, dear brother, dear sister. He cares for you. He knew exactly where John was. John might have wondered, was I foolish to follow after that rabbi who came along the Sea of Galilee and called me and my brother James? James, he was put to death with the sword, and I have served him faithfully. And is this, is this the reward? But Jesus, he comes to his servant, and he says, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And John he says, I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands reflecting the seven churches that were to be addressed. Those lampstands, they were there shining forth the light in each of their communities. And in the middle of the lampstands, there was one like a son of man, clothed in a robe reaching to the feet and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in a furnace. And his voice, it was like the sound of many waters, 
In his right hand he held the seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face, his face was like the, sh the sun shining in its strength. It's a description of the glory and the beauty, the magnificence of our Savior Jesus Christ in all of his risen glory, the glory which he will display all through eternity. Who is this man? Who is this one who is called Jesus, who bears the name salvation, who died upon Calvary's cross? Was it all a mistake? No, he was God's very son, sent into this world for a specific purpose at a specific time that he might call to himself men and women out of death and out of darkness that we might abide in his light for all eternity. And even today, he comes to us when we are on an island somewhat like Patmos, when we are all alone, and he reminds us that no, we are not alone. His name is Emmanuel. His name is God with us. And his promise was that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Lo, I am with you to the very end of the age, uh, to the very end of time, to the very end of the world. I am with you. I care for you. And I have the power I have the power to make good on every one of my promises. Who do you serve? To whom do you bow? In whom do you trust? I beg you, I implore you to look to one who is more than able to do that which he has committed himself to do, and that is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. He is the glorious one, and I bid you to lift your eyes and look to him and find in him all that you desire, all that you need. Oh, the beauty of Jesus Christ. Who is this man? His name is Jesus. Look to him today. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 